Hello, my name is Hunter Mills. I'm going to be your flute teacher today. So we're going to start by talking about the three parts of the instrument. There is the head joint, identifiable by the armature hole. The foot joint, which is the smallest piece of the instrument. And the body joint, which is easily identifiable by all of its little puppets on it. So, before we even think about connecting these pieces, you need to make sure that it is properly clean. So you will take your spit rag, like so. Make sure you wrap it through your stick, as I've already done. And then cover it, like so. And then you will take it and lightly and gently push it through your instrument, making sure to twist as you go in order to get all the spit out. Now that we have a cleaned instrument, we're ready to play. So, to assemble, start by taking your body joint, taking your head joint, finding this part right here, and then connecting it, like so. So you want to make sure you have a firm grasp and you twist, not force it in as that can damage the instrument. As far as where the armature hole is actually lined up, it's kind of dependent on the player themselves. Um, however, lining up the armature hole with this peg right here is a good place to start. And then for the foot joint, you do the exact same thing. Find where this peg is and this peg, and you slowly twist. You want to make sure that the two keys are lined up. Otherwise, it's very difficult to play the instrument. So there we have it. Now that we have our instrument assembled, it's important to learn how to hold it properly. So with your left hand, it's going to be one finger right there, one finger right there, there, and there. And then your thumb will be used to push this key right here. And then with your right hand, it'll be pinky, and then three, two, one. So that's one, two, 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 two. Now. Now that we have our fingers situated, it's time to talk about the rest of the body. When you're actually holding the instrument, uh, you want to make sure you're putting most of the weight of the flute right here on your finger in order to balance it with your right thumb right here and then against your chin and lip like this so that you're able to hold it and then not fall over the place. Um, when you are holding the instrument, you want to make sure you try to keep it parallel to the ground in order to keep your airstream steady because if it's too low or too high, it's really difficult to maintain a constant tone. Um, it's also important to keep your arms straight and not let them bend all over the place, otherwise it'll also affect your tone. After learning how to hold the instrument, the next logical step is learning how to make a sound on it. So when you're talking about embouchure, you want to try to keep your lips tight and almost pursed. Um, a good way to begin to find your aperture, or your embouchure, I'm sorry, is to kiss this small part and then kind of roll over. So it'd be this and then over. Um, it's really easy, or not easy, but easier to begin making sound just on the head joint because um, it gives you more time to just focus on actually making the sound as opposed to holding the whole instrument and worrying about balance. Um, common mistake a lot of people make when they are first trying to make a sound is their aperture on their mouth is way too big and so the wind and the air is just all going out and they get lightheaded really quickly. Um, so it's important to make sure that you're keeping your lips pursed and tight to avoid passing out or having an asthma attack. Now that we're ready to play the instrument, you reassemble it, making sure that we keep our head joint about a quarter or eighth of an inch out. Um, the instrument is naturally tuned sharp to A442, so we wanna compensate for that and make sure we're not playing just a little bit over the rest of our ensemble to be quite the crunchy sound. Um, so we get back into our position, keeping in mind all the things we talked about with keeping our mouth small and not letting all the air out. Um, a good way to find your spot is to, while you're playing, kind of twist and go side to side in order to find the sweet spot, such as this. Notice minor adjustments make the biggest difference. 
um, just that slight, slight movement. It's the difference between having a great sound and an awful sound. I'll show that one more time. You want to aim for a very steady, consistent sound. Um, you don't want it to be wavering. Also, keeping in mind your air support, steady. Um, position is just as important as your actual support. Um, if both or either one are lacking, then you're not going to get a good sound out of the instrument. One last thing, a uh, couple of common errors that new players have on this instrument. Um, one, as we already discussed, was too much air. Um, having the mouth too far open, it's really hard to play in a steady ensemble and keep up when you're running out of air and not having any oxygen to your brain. Um, another thing a lot of players do is they don't articulate properly. So when you're articulating, you want to make sure your tongue is kind of going to the top of your mouth. Um, a good way to explain this to your students is if you turn on a faucet and you run your hand over it, underneath it, I'm sorry, the water continues to go. Um, you want that to be your tongue in the air. You're not stopping the air, just blocking it momentarily. Um, another common issue with the instrument is if your pads are not completing completely down. So if you're attempting to play a note and no sound, um, it could be your position or it could be leaking pads, which need to be replaced.